All right. Fantastic. Good afternoon, everybody. It is Tuesday, October the 5th at 4 p.m. And it is fantastic to be here with you. If you have not yet done so, do be sure to sign into the chat. Just your name and department is sufficient. This is one hour of flex credit. So I will retain um, these records. So when flex time comes around, we can verify your attendance and participation. So thank you so much for getting that uh, in the chat. Um, again, welcome. I see a lot of familiar names and faces in the room. So it is great to be here with you all. Uh, if anyone here doesn't know me, just very briefly, I'm Michael. It's a pleasure. I teach anthropology and I am also serving as the online education faculty coordinator, which is just a very long and drawn out title to say, I help faculty teach online. Um, and, and I'd like to add, I genuinely enjoy helping faculty teach online. Uh, it's the best part of my day. And workshops like this, uh, to me, it, it's, it's fun. It's so much fun. So I, I'm delighted to be here with you all. Uh, we're going to get into the content in just a moment. I'm also going to copy and paste the PowerPoint for today's presentation into the chat. If you like to keep those things, you are more than welcome to do so. Uh, but before I get there, just a few items of housekeeping. Uh, let's see, first and foremost, I welcome participation during these workshops. There's only, there's only 13 of us here, so that it's actually kind of nice. Some, some of mine are quite large. So you are welcome to utilize the chat, uh, use the raise hand function, unmute, uh, whatever way suits you to participate and ask questions along the way. I'm here for it. So um, feel free to engage in those ways. And I'll, I'll stop along the way and ask questions as we move through the content. Um, secondly, if, uh, if you would be so kind as to keep yourself muted, unless you intentionally unmute to share or ask a question, um, just so background noise doesn't become distracting. And then finally, if for any reason I suddenly disappear without warning, it means that Zoom froze on me. Give me three minutes. I'll be back as soon as I can. Um, Priscilla will tell you microbiology jokes. So, um, right, yeah, I know she will. She's got a million of them. Okay, so that being said, I'm gonna do two things. One, I'm going to take my PowerPoint and I'm gonna share it in the chat right now. I want anyone with the link can view. Perfect. And if, if you lose this or if you have any issues uh, accessing it, just, just let me know. Shoot me an email. I, I keep this stuff forever, so I, I never delete anything. Um, OK, and now I'm going to go ahead and share my screen uh, on that same exact slideshow presentation. Perfect. There's that link again. Let's go ahead and view that show. All right. Here we go. We are here to talk about three ways Ally Accessibility Checker can immediately help you. And that's not just a catchy title. Like I mean, today, in the next 54 minutes, this will help you in your online classes. And whether you are teaching asynchronous, synchronous, hybrid, or even if you're teaching on campus, but you use elements of Canvas for your class, this has an immediate benefit for you. So that's what we're here to talk about today. Uh, I know some folks in the room are already familiar with Ally, that's great. We're going to also meet folks who maybe have no idea what this is about. Uh, so we're, we're gonna try and take, uh, for me, the, the best three ways to utilize this tool uh, to make our courses more accessible. Uh, so with that being said, here is really our introduction and our goals for the day. Uh, we are going to, first of all, identify the importance of universal design and online accessibility while we demonstrate the basic functions of Ally Accessibility Checker. Uh, we're going to focus on three functions of Ally. First, the course accessibility score. Second, 
individual content accessibility, and third, the alternative formatting tool. Uh, that last one, number three, uh, I'll tell you right now, it's going to blow your mind. So we'll, we'll get there. Uh, we'll talk about all these wonderful applications in our classes. I also do want to emphasize uh, from an equity mindedness approach how critical this sort of content is. Um, to me, in my role as a faculty, et cetera, uh, I see online learning as in itself an equity-minded practice. We are literally meeting students where they are, right? In terms of their education. We're, you know, they're taking our classes in their homes. Uh, and so that, that is to me one very powerful form of practicing student equity. Uh, but even furthermore, when we think about accessibility in our online classes, we are able to design courses that meet each and every one of our students' needs. Uh, so that is what we are going to think about today as we look at the tool that is known as Ally Accessibility Checker. So moving on into it, what is universal design? Uh, my cultural curriculum audit buddies are gonna know this one by heart, I guarantee it. But just to summarize things, uh, I, I love this definition. I'm not really a copy paste slideshow kind of guy, but I love this from the Center for Excellence in Universal Design. Um, just to paraphrase some segments. Universal design or UD is the design and composition so that it, of an environment so that it can be accessed, understood, and used to the greatest extent possible by all people, regardless of their age, size, ability, or disability. If an environment is accessible, usable, convenient, a pleasure to use, everyone benefits. I bolded this last line because simply put, universal design is good design. I'm, I'm really just pause on that last sentiment. Uh, when we design really anything with the idea that it is built for everyone, it's, it's good, it's, it makes sense. It meets everybody where they are. So this is a, an attitude and an approach that I would implore you to consider as you create your online courses. So let, let's, let's think about this uh, very literally, right? For universal design, uh, I have an image here, okay? An image here of um, two people uh, about to cross a street. And in this image, there are not one, but there are two elements of universal design. And if you see them, even if you only see one, that's okay. But when you identify universal design in this image, I'd like you to type it into the chat. First one to do so gets bragging rights for the day. How does this image work for everyone? Oh boy, like four people came in all at the same time. I love it, I love it. Priscilla, Robin, Chef Pierre, Steve. Uh, look at that, yep, you got it. Look at this, we, we have one, a curb cut. Okay, so at that street corner, there is a ramp. And yeah, sure, it's, it's great for somebody who might happen to be in a wheelchair. It's also great for somebody riding a bicycle or uh, pushing a stroller. Right. Uh, and then also, yeah, this this yellow uh, rectangle with bumps on it. That's a tactile pad. And it's actually designed if, if somebody is blind or visually impaired when they're walking, they can feel that sensation and that they know they are about to enter the street. So it's it's very, very interesting um, to see universal design in the real world. Now that's all great and everything, but why am I talking about architecture? Well, uh, in my mind, each and every one of us is the architect 
in our online courses. We are building something. We are building a place, really. And this place is designed for our students to go. Uh, and they, you know, of course, they learn, they engage, they demonstrate their learning, et cetera. So when we are building these online spaces on Canvas or maybe even on Zoom, we want to be sure and follow these same principles, that it's built for everybody in mind. So what does that look like? There's a number of ways that we can think about universal design online. Here's just three examples. First of all, closed captions, right? We've, we've been talking about this for a long, 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 long time. The importance of accurate closed captions on the video content that we show or that we have available within Canvas or even in our Zoom recordings. Shoot, after this workshop, I am going to go and revise my closed captions for accuracy. That's what we do. Second in the middle, alternate text. Okay, so making sure that the images in our courses have an accurate and also succinct description. Um, that uh, can serve, of course, our students who are blind or visually impaired and may not be able to see those images to the same degree as other students in the class. And then on the far right, you see just a screenshot from what looks like Microsoft Word. Uh, and, and that's talking about having a logical formatted heading structure in our documents and also on Canvas. Um, yeah, that's really important if a student uses a screen reader, but also it just keeps us organized and makes our content really, really clear. So that's something I want you to think about as we press onward. Universal design doesn't just, doesn't only serve our students with disabilities or accommodations through DSPNS. I want you to think about how these sorts of elements in our courses can serve all of our students, can serve anybody. I'm, my, my goodness, literally just yesterday, I was screening parts of a documentary that I wanted to show in, uh, in my class online. And I happened to have a sleeping baby on my shoulder and my headphones were out of reach. So I had the choice to turn the volume up and wake him or get up to get my headphones and wake him. Nah, I just muted and turned on the closed captions. So you, uh, I always try and think about that. How do these elements serve everybody? No matter who they are, no matter their age, size, ability, disability, what have you, okay? But let's jump to the concrete part of today's workshop. Ally is a really, really amazing part of our accessibility toolkit. As we endeavor towards building courses with universal design in mind, Ally will help us along the way. And I'm going to focus on, again, three main functions of Ally. First, the course report, then the content accessibility, and then finally, alternative formatting. In order to do that well, I am going to be jumping back and forth between the slideshow and my Canvas course, and then also a, a demonstration course. So if at any point during my demonstration, you do not see on screen what I am referring to, please unmute and let me know. I also invite you to open up Canvas and to follow along as I do a couple of these things. It might be informative for you to think about. But let's jump to it. Course report. Ally has been around at Long Beach City College for a about a year and a half. Yeah, just, well, not, not even, not even, forgive me, just over a year. And one of the first things I noticed is that from the homepage, Ally will give us a holistic view of how we are doing in terms of accessibility. Now, this is looking at the entire course, right? 
Uh, this can be overwhelming when we first look at it. I know it was for me, but to me, it's also a starting point to figure out where do I need to start? What areas of my course most urgently need revision for accessibility? So I'm gonna go ahead and show you right now. Just gonna jump over to Canvas. Um, and I, I'm gonna show you a couple different shells, right? So this is, this is my current course. I teach anthropology. And this is live, so I'm not going to do too much poking around or my students will get confused. Uh, but I've also created uh, just a, a, a sandbox shell that has the same course, linguistic anthropology, but from a year and a half ago. And the idea there is to show you the, the capacity for improvement over time. Right. So you can do this along with me if you'd like. On the home page, in every one of our courses, on the right hand side, there are these nice buttons. OK, uh, let me I can make them bigger. Yes, I can. Great. Uh, the one I'd like to draw your attention to is right here, accessibility report. And it has this little person inside of a circle. It's neat. But by clicking on that button, you are taken to an accessibility score for the entire course. And you'll see right here that this course is 75% accessible. Uh, and even furthermore, it breaks down the different parts of your course. So pages in Canvas, PDF documents that I've uploaded, announcements, assignments, images, Word docs, et cetera. And then this course report also provides links to the specific issues. So for example, I can say, oh, this, this is an exclamation point. That means it's, it's severe. I got to take a look at that. And by clicking on this, look at this. Oh my. Um, I have, and I'm sure many of us do at some point, scanned articles for my students to read. And I thought, hey, I'm, I'm going to save them money. I'm not going to have them buy a reader or buy a book. I'm just going to scan it, post it online, right? That's great. But the issue is, when you have scanned documents like this, they are inaccessible to something like a screen reader. Um, and we'll, we'll get to some of the solutions for these issues as we move through. Even things like, let me see, uh, this, the image does not have a description. I click on that and I go to a list from, from all throughout my course that Ally has identified as, oh my goodness, you need to, you need to fix this stuff. See these 25% accessible because I don't have a description for these things. Now, this is incredibly informative, but it's not just the information. This actually provides a mechanism for how to improve these items. If I see an item, I'm gonna choose um, this one right here, okay? If I click on that item, Ally opens it up. And that's, that's the image. This is my image that I uploaded to the course, uh, but it's also telling me the issues here. This image is missing a description. Okay, great. I can learn more. I can learn, what does that mean? And it tells me all about these image descriptions or alt text and why that's important. I could even learn how to write a good description. Look at that, that's, that's great. I have an example, okay? And then even furthermore, right here, I can choose to type in an image description, click the add button, and then this image will be accessible. 
So you can use the accessibility report to make these direct changes. So just to give you an example, um, let's see. This is Australopithecus sediba skull on cover of Science Magazine. There's some anthropology content for you. And I click Add. And look at that, 100%. Doesn't that feel good? Doesn't that feel better than that 25? So to me, this is often one of the first recommendations I make with instructors is use the accessibility report and just get going on these images, right? Just, just click on the image, just as I did, write up a, a sentence or so of alternative text, and then your accessibility score will improve, uh, in, in many cases, quite drastically, depending on the number of images you're able to revise, okay? Are there any questions about what I just did? You're free to unmute, use the chat, whatever you'd like. Any questions about that? Okay, okay great. Let me also show you, here we go, um, the capacity for improvement. I told you this was my class a year ago, or excuse me, a year and a half ago. Um, I had some work to do. And I'm not here to tell anybody that, uh, you know, oh, oh, you know, oh, your score is too low. Um, you, you're not going to make it as an online instructor. That, that's not my style. That's not my philosophy on things. Um, I've had instructors start with a course accessibility score uh, in the 20s, right? That's okay. They got a lot of room to grow and that's all right. It's gonna take time, but it is possible to get it very, very, very high. Just for comparison's sake, this is my current course, fall 2021, same class. My accessibility report now 99. And I'll tell you, I, I am going for that 100. <laughs> I promise you. <laughs> but I have a few images that um, I really, really need for the class and cannot find substitutes. And they have some color contrast issues. So some of those, it's a little bit tricky to find a replacement quickly. Um, but again, there is absolutely capacity for improvement. And also bear in mind, depending on how much course content you have, this might be a really heavy lift. This might be something that takes you, you know, a couple of days. Uh, again, I know some folks, some faculty teaching online, um, maybe they don't have 99 content pages like me or 44 images like me. And that's great. Then, then it will be less work for you to go through that content and make it more accessible, okay? Um, so this is the first step, is to take a look from that home page, take a look at our overall accessibility report and identify uh, what we need to work on first. And, and again, Many faculty, I encourage them to think about the images, but we'll get to those documents in a minute. If I may, you know, I'm, I'm not even gonna make this bigger. Um, I'm just gonna jump on down to the next slide right here and just say, step two, content accessibility, looking at individual items within our course content. So that can be pages, assignments, discussions, files, whatever. Um, Ally provides accessibility scores for each of these things. The two most common ones are images embedded in, in a page. Ooh, that should say embedded, sorry. And then also file uploads, maybe a doc, a PDF. Um, some, some folks might upload um, pages. You know, it, it depends on, on what word processor you like to use. But then on the right-hand side here, we have some images 
um, on what those different color ratings mean on that, I don't know, is it a gas tank? Is it a speedometer? I, I, I'm not exactly sure. But um, red obviously is the most urgent things that need to be revised. And then yellow a little better. Mostly green, almost there. Fully green, you're, you're perfect. You're good to go, right? Just like that, uh, that Science Magazine image that I showed you earlier, okay? So let me jump back on Canvas. I have some notes on what exactly I wanna show you. And again, you are welcome to drop in the chats or ask a question along the way if need be. Um, but let's see, I'm gonna go back home. And yes, okay, great. So let me show you first what this looks like within a page. To do that, I will take you to my modules. Here we go. And, and again, th this is my entire course, just old. So I just made a very quick demonstration page so you would know what this looks like. And on this page, uh, th th I just threw this together. Uh, so it, ideally, I would encourage you to put more guidance for students on a content page like this. But here we are for demonstration. So I just say, students, please compare and contrast the falses below and be prepared to discuss in class. And I have three images, one, two, and there's the one we just did. And look, it's perfect. That's great. And then this one at the bottom, oh, that one also says perfect too. I'll have to look at that one. Uh, but this one, is a little bit problematic. And here's the other thing as well. This is a teacher view only privilege. Um, students do not see these gear symbol or these speedometer symbols uh, when they are in our courses. Um, that, that, that's just in our view. So just keep that in mind um, if you're concerned about that. But so here I am within a content page. Um, I can click edit, and I'll show you that in a moment. But first, I'm just going to click on the actual symbol down below. And just like it did earlier, it's going to open up Ally within my course. And just as I did previously, I can type in an image description within this box and click save, and it should be good to go. Awesome. Now, I already showed you that. I want to show you a, a different way to think about it. So I will exit that. And I'm actually going to go up to the edit button on this page. All right. A couple things here. Um, one, the ally symbol is not present in the edit mode. I've, I've had some faculty ask me, I don't see that, I don't see the speedometer thing, where is it? Uh, and, and usually it turns out that they are in edit mode. It will not appear there, okay? Uh, rather, there are two things for you to check out. One is, again, the little person in a circle right here, the accessibility checker. Clicking on that reveals, oh, the issues in the page. Right, it tells me image file name should not be used as the alt text describing the image. And I, of course, that makes sense to me. So how do we fix it? And I already know that this one is no good. See, look at the checkers even telling me you have one thing wrong on this page. I actually count two, so that's a little funny. Sometimes Canvas misses stuff. I'll tell you that right now. Even Ally can sometimes miss stuff. So always double check. But here's what I do. And I encourage you to do the same. I just click on the image. And look right there, pops up image options. And I just check this out. I just make sure, is my alt text what I want it to be? And in this case, it says turkanaboy.jpg. Um, no, I don't want it to be that. That is the file name. Oops, I closed it. That is the file name. So I'm just going to get rid of that. And I'm going to give something much more descriptive. Uh, and by the way, the nickname of this fossil is Turkana boy because 
he was about 13 um, when this specimen passed away in Lake Turkana. Um, but anyway, I will say the articulated skeleton of Homo erectus, aka Turkana boy. And then I will click on done. Excellent. And then just, just for fun, let's see what this one says. Remember we revised this one earlier. Oh, Sediba Magazine, that's interesting. So I changed it in Ally, but then it didn't come through in Canvas. So that's very interesting. So I would go ahead and change this one as well, just to be safe. And then lastly, of course, this one, image options, yeah, five.jpg, that means nothing, right? That doesn't mean anything. Uh, so I will put, let's see, skull of, uh, excuse me, Australopithecus, robustus. You didn't know you were getting an anthropology lesson today, did you? And done, okay? So I'm going to click save. And then look what happens to those ally symbols. Now ally catches it. Ally says, great. The image description you made within the canvas text box is good to go. Right? And I found this happen. See, it's right there, what I just typed. I find this uh, to be happening from time to time where what I type into Ally is only sometimes recognized by Canvas. However, by clicking the edit button, making those changes in Canvas always gets pushed forward to Ally. So again, that's why I want you to think about the accessibility report as a way to find what needs to be fixed. But when it comes to actually fixing the items, yes, you can click on the speedometer, you can do it this way, but I like to just get it all done in one go by clicking edit and going through all the images on a given page. Okay. All right. That being said, those are just images. Let us also think about our documents. Uh, for this one, I'm, I'm in a different shell. It literally just is empty. It's an empty practice shell. Um, and I uploaded a couple of documents to this shell ahead of time. Uh, one of them is my old syllabus, okay? And just like I'm sure many of you do, I went to files within Canvas. I clicked this upload button and I dragged and I dropped my syllabus in there. And now it appears here in my course files. In fact, depending on your course, you might, you might have a lot of stuff in those files. But look what Ally does here as well. It has an accessibility rating and up oh, there's our handy dandy symbol. And by hovering over it, it says it's low. Click to improve. So again, this is a document. So it is that dot doc um, file extension. By clicking on that symbol, Ally tells me all that ails you. Uh, and look, it, it has my syllabus on the left-hand side, just as I uploaded it. Oof, there's some issues going on here with formatting, huh? Yeah, this is my syllabus from, let's see, two years ago. And oh, that stings. It's only 27% accessible. <laughs> Um, I had some learning to do. I truly, truly did. But here's something really, really neat. Uh, Ally doesn't just tell us what's wrong. It actually provides some guidance on how to fix it. So look on the right-hand side. If I can, I'll make it larger. Yes. This document contains images that are missing a description. It tells me what's that, what that means. Great. But also, how to add descriptions. Click on that. And look, it, it then asks you, um, open the original document. 
Do you have Microsoft Office? Do you have, um, excuse me, 365? Do you have Word for, uh, from 2016? Do you have Writer for, I don't even know what that is, uh, but let's just say I'm using Office 365. And I say that because all faculty have access to it. Look, it, it gives me step-by-step step on how to make the changes within Office 365. I, I mean, it, you know, and it tells me how to write a good description. That's great. That's amazing. I can print the instructions if I like that sort of hard copy deal. Amazing. Let's think about this too. Um, it, it's not just the images in my syllabus that are problematic, right? There are a number of other things by clicking all issues. All right, so there's one missing uh, image description. The document does not have headings. The document contains tables that are missing headers, contains text with insufficient content. I was, I needed to learn this stuff two years ago, didn't I? Man, this is humbling. And now by clicking on any one of these items, Ally can tell me how to do that thing. Again, we're assuming some things that you have certain word processors, but most cases for Microsoft Word, it tells you step-by-step step on how to improve that element of a given document, right? It can take time. But one of my favorite things to do is to download a document like this, make all the improvements that Ally suggests, and then re-upload it. You just drag and drop it back here, and it just does a straight switch of this old inaccessible syllabus for the newly revised accessible one. Um, and, and this is absolutely feasible. I will tell you, and I'm going to my current course now, Fall 21, you do not have to sacrifice um, aesthetics or welcoming ideas in your syllabus for it to be accessible. Here's my current syllabus. It's come a long way from 27%. It is now 100% accessible. And I like to think that it is still aesthetic it's still welcoming. I just put in some time to make those revisions happen. So it is absolutely possible to have fully accessible documents um, when you are the one making those documents, okay? Um, let's see. Oh, the syllabus does look like it has headings. Yes, um, that's, a, that's a great question, Laura and, uh, and Jay. So in Canvas or in our documents, uh, we often, and I'll show you, I'll just show you, it's, it's easier to just demonstrate. Uh, if I create a brand new page, okay? And this will only take a second. Let's see, test page here. Um, I can absolutely just go, title here and I can make it bold. I can underline it. I can do all sorts of neat things. Oops. And then I just skip a line and switch back to my 12 point font. And just here goes the content. And visually, this looks like proper heading structure. Um, the deal is it, it's actually not. And if a student were to be using a screen reader, that screen reader would be unable to identify that this is the title versus the paragraph text. So here's the difference. I'm just going to erase everything. Okay. What I'm going to do instead is click on heading two and put the title here. And then I make sure that paragraph is selected content here da, 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 da. and then let's say i want to go to a subheading okay and then da, 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 da. right 
this would be understandable for a screen reader. The same concept applies for our uploaded documents in Microsoft Word or in PDFs. They need to be formatted with these specific headings or titles, et cetera. Um, and I have training materials that will show you exactly how to do this. In fact, my, my last slide is really just showing you how to learn all these complex things. Yep. Okay, great. Thank you so much for those comments in the chat. Oops. Um, I'm just going to go home. Okay. Back to my slideshow. The third, yes, the third element of Ally Accessibility Checker. And I told you this one is going to blow your mind. I wasn't kidding. It's the alternative formatting. When we upload files in Canvas or documents, as you saw with my old syllabus, they often have accessibility issues. But Ally has an amazing tool that allows us to download these items in different formats, which can create more accessible versions. Let me show you exactly what I mean right now. As I mentioned before, just get everything out of the way. Uh, as I mentioned before, I sometimes upload articles for my students to read so they don't have to buy a reader. One example um, is, is this article right here, Body Ritual Among the Nasarema. And this is a classic anthropology reading. Every one of my students has to read it in the first week of class. And this is something I just scanned it and uploaded it. I was like, cool, I'm saving them some cash, but there are problems with that. It's not accessible, right? I'll show you. I put this in Canvas. Where are we? Sorry, I have three shells open. Need to remember which one is which. Um, yes, okay. So I uploaded that file, bodyritual.pdf. Okay, it's what we were just looking at right here. Um, it's a scanned document and Ally flags it. Ally says, hey, hey professor, uh, that's not gonna cut it, like 0%. <laughs> this PDF is scanned, meaning that a student using a screen reader, they wouldn't be able to make any sense of this document at all. So that's an issue. Um, that, that's a significant issue. Um, just to give you a sample of what this looks like as well. So let's say I want to post uh, that article in a reading assignment. This is actually what I do. And I go, I edit this. And I've already uploaded that article to my Canvas files. So here's what I'll do. I'm just gonna insert media. Again, I already did this ahead of time. Oops, sorry, not media. What am I thinking? <laughs> Upload document, course documents. And there it is, body ritual. Okay, great. So now the PDF is linked in this page. Awesome. I like that. I, I like to do things this way. So there's instructions right above, right below the article. And I'll click save. Oh, but again, Ally is telling me right here, look, that's not going to cut it. It's not going to happen. But, but look, look at my slide. I made this symbol really big. <laughs> so it sticks out in your memory. Because when Canvas it's really small. Look, it's hiding way up here, that alternative format symbol. I tell you, most faculty miss it. Let me give you a couple good reasons not to miss it. I'm gonna click on that. And it's taking a look at the elements of this page. So just my typed text, and then also the article itself, body ritual. So if I click on it, look at this, look at this, look, look, look. I can select any one of these items and then Ally will get to work to create a different version of that document. So this first one, for example, um, it's an OCR PDF. 
It's alphabet soup. Um, OCR, you, you don't need to know this, but I'll tell you anyway, it stands for optical character recognition. And that is when these very smart computers read the PDF and recognize the letters and words and sentences within them. Look what happens if I download that. Can I do that? Sorry, my captions are in the way. I need to hide that. Okay. So I click this button to download that alternate format. Okay. Now look, 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 look. I open this up. And look at that. It's a little different. Okay. This is the original. This is the new one that Ally created. But Ally essentially read the article and made a copy of it. And look, here's the difference. I can select individual words. That tells me that a screen reader can handle this. In my original one, look what happens when I try and select a word. Nothing. It just, cop it just grabs the whole thing because it's treating this like an image, okay? So in my new one, let's say that I want to um, upload it to Canvas just to compare and contrast it. Here's what we do. Uh, let me move this down. Okay, okay, great, great, great. I'm gonna go to my files and I will upload and I will choose the right one. I promise you that says, OCR. Okay, there it is. I just uploaded that. Uh, sometimes it takes a minute for the accessibility checker. Oh, look at that. Look, look, look. This is the new one. I did nothing to it, but automatically it is, look at that, 94% accessible. It went from zero to 94 in all of what, 30 seconds? That is amazing. So that is worth heavy consideration. Um, I've done this exact same process, download that OCR version for you know, much longer reading assignments. One big word of caution. Sometimes the OCR gets it wrong uh, sometimes there are mistakes. So I always give it a reading. I always make sure, hey, is this saying exactly what I need it to say before sharing it with my students? But those of you like me who want to, you want to go for that hundred. We can do that. Let me show you how. Let me show you how. Uh, I'm going back to, pardon the, the three-year-old singing in the background. He's got quite a voice on him. Uh, let's see. Okay, so I'm going to that page I was just on with the original and accessible article. I'm clicking this tiny hidden button. Clicking on the article, the PDF itself. I'm going to choose the second option, HTML. And I'll show you why in a second. By the way, these other ones are really neat. You can download a, an MP3 version. So, and I do that sometimes. I say, I don't care if they read it or hear it. They want to listen to it like an audio book. Great, right? So you can even download it that way. Uh, but I'm going to do HTML. Here's why. Download. I will open this up. And look at that. This is just the text. So it lost the, the columns and the formatting of the original one. But here's what I'm going to do. I'm just gonna go ahead and grab everything. Okay, there we go. Go back to my week one reading and look what I can do. Look what I can do. I can just say, you know what? Forget the attachment. Please read the following article and answer the questions below. I can insert a line and then paste. And look, 
the article that I just grabbed and downloaded from that HTML export is now right within Canvas. And this also allows me to go through, if there are mistakes, which there are, I can fix them. So, okay, th this shouldn't be a line break. So I'm gonna fix that, okay? I'll go through again, that shouldn't be a line break. I'll fix that. Uh, I don't need the page number. I don't need the title here. So I'm just gonna go right up here. But again, uh, this is a, a few page article. I'm fixing it in just a few seconds. And fixing the formatting. I don't need these, right? Okay, and let's just say I'm done. I'm not gonna you know, do this whole thing for you. But look, I save it. And the, the entire article is right here within Canvas, which by nature makes it accessible. So my students don't need to download anything extra. They don't need to worry about the file format. It is housed within Canvas. This to me, this has been the game changer for me. Uh, when I have those PDFs that I scanned sometimes years ago and I cannot find another version, having Ally make these different versions of it allows me to revise them much, much faster. Um, so I would strongly urge you to think about this. If you assign readings or PDFs, articles, even OER, you can think about that one too. If you have an entire textbook, you can look at it uh, through this lens as well. So, oh, see, <laughs> worth the price of admission right there. I told, I, I, I said it, I wasn't kidding. This is a game changer. This, this will change um, your workload for accessibility. So um, I'm happy to share this with you. Please tell your friends, tell, tell your family, tell your enemies, I don't care, tell everyone about this alternative text tool because it rarely gets utilized, okay? So that was a lot to think about. Um, let me get back to my slides for just a couple more minutes because we're just about on time. Um, I encourage you to keep building your skills. And to do that, we are very fortunate to have in-house accessibility trainings. For example, we might even have some folks in the room who did it. Right now, we have the 10-day accessibility challenge. It's a self-paced course. And for 10 days, each day, you learn a different accessibility design skill in Canvas. It only takes about 15 minutes a day. You begin the course by sharing, you know, just, just with me, just with the facilitator, um, but sharing your accessibility score for a course that you currently teach. At the end of the 10 days, you share that score again. I've had faculty increase by 30, 40% in, throughout that 10 day course. And it's also worth four hours of flex credit. I strongly encourage you to sign up. Just click the link right here. We also have PDF accessibility tutorial, Microsoft Word accessibility tutorial, and PowerPoint accessibility tutorial. Each one of those will grab you two hours of flex credit. Those are self-paced tutorials. I am not uh, looking at any submissions on those, but I am here to support you as you move through those trainings. And then lastly, more accessibility resources. Um, there are some helpful videos linked here. If you need a refresher on Ally Course Accessibility Checker. Um, and then also the final link is for the California Community Colleges Accessibility Center. They got some good stuff on there. Um, I, I refer to it from time to time. If you've never taken a look, I, I'd invite you to look at this link and see what applies to your course. So all that being said, um, that brings me to the end of my slides. I want to sincerely and genuinely thank you 
for prioritizing accessibility in your online course. Uh, making our courses ready for every student at Long Beach City College to me uh, is absolutely critical to promoting student equity. So thank you, thank you, thank you for coming today. Um, if there are any questions or comments, I am all ears. I am gonna go ahead and stop the recording.